Welcome to this complete beginner's tutorial in Cubase 9. I'm going to walk you through the layout, how to navigate, how to record some audio and MIDI, and then I've picked out the best resources for you to go and carry on learning Cubase after this video, so stay tuned. How's it going guys? It's John Holt here with The Audio Journey, helping make music production accessible to all. And here on this channel, what I do is a variety of music production tutorials, mainly focused towards beginners and beyond. So if that's something that you might be interested in, then definitely consider subscribing. So in this tutorial, I'm using Cubase Elements 9. So let's jump straight into the software and get going with the tutorial. So down in the description below, I've put timestamps for each of the things that I'm going to be covering in this video so that you can flick to the bits that you need to watch. So this is the first screen that you're going to see when you open up Cubase. And if you're having trouble installing it, I've got a video linked in the description of how to install your version of Cubase. So the first thing we need to do once we've got Cubase open is select the audio device. And what that basically means is you're probably going to have a sound card like a Focusrite, um, an interface of some sort. And we need to tell Cubase that that's what you want to use to send and receive audio. So the way that you do that is you come up to the devices menu on the top bar and come to device setup. You want to come to VST audio system and basically you just want to select your device in here. So I've already got the Scarlett 6i6 USB selected because that's the audio interface that I'm using. Uh, so you just need to pick the one that you're using. Next up, I'm going to give you a couple of shortcuts that just help you navigate around Cubase because when I first started using Cubase, it was incredibly frustrating because I'm used to other pieces of software. If you don't know how to play and pause, get back to zero, zoom and whatnot, then it can be really off-putting and you can just sort of give up. But I'm going to give you some shortcuts that make it really quick and easy to navigate. It's just that I didn't know at the start. So I'm going to give that to you now. First of all, Play and pause uh, or play and stop is just going to be the space bar. So you can see my bar running along here. If I press space bar again, that's going to stop. To get back to zero, this is something that I couldn't do for ages. I'm used to using enter for that. All you need to do is press comma and both of those apply on Mac or PC. For zooming, it's really, really simple on Cubase. It's just the keys G for golf and H for hotel. So G is going to zoom you out and H is going to zoom you in. You don't need to hold shift or anything, so it's a really quick zooming process. You can also click and hold on the top bar and go up and down. I find that a little bit more fiddly though. Another thing that you might want to do at some point is open up the mixer. And the quickest way to do that is to come up to the top right hand corner here and press that. You could, as you see, uh, hold command option E, but that's a little bit more difficult to remember. Next up, we're going to move on to the basic layout in this main screen of Cubase so that you know what's where and what you need to be looking for. First of all, we've got the main track view, which is this big area in the middle. And this is where we're going to add tracks a little bit later on, either audio, instrument, MIDI tracks. And that's where you're going to see your recorded audio. This moves from left to right to play the audio and show you where you are in the track. It's a visual representation of what you've got in your track at any one time. Down here, we've got the transport bar, and this is your classic sort of stop, play, record, set something on a loop. And also this tells you whereabouts you are in your song in terms of beats and bars. Um, you've also got your tempo down here, which is BPM or beats per minute. And the metronome you can turn on and off. Um, that's the sort of click that you use to keep in time when you're recording. And once we get onto recording, I'll explain why you'd want that on or off during your recording. Next up over here, we've got the inspector and I'm going to add an audio track in just for an example. We will go through this a little bit more later. Um, so once you've got an audio track or some sort of track loaded up in here, it just gives you some details about it and it lets you add plugins like EQ, compressors, reverbs and stuff like that when we get into, into that a little bit later. Uh, but yeah, it basically just lets you control certain settings on your track. Over on the right here we've got the media bay and basically this is your storage or your hard drive for Cubase. It's where you can access instruments that you can use and play which we'll do a little bit later on, loops and samples which is audio files that you can use in your own music that are royalty free, 
presets, which is pre-saved settings for different things. So you can have this for plugins like EQ, compression, um, overall strip presets, which give you a range of effects. Uh, basically, it's just pre-saved settings. And user presets are presets that you've saved. So if you're using an EQ or an instrument and you think, actually, I want to save this so I can come back to it, save it as a preset and then you can access it here. VST instruments section is exactly that. So VST instruments is a virtual instrument and that's something that we're coming on to a little bit later. And finally, the mixer, as I explained earlier, you can get to by clicking just up here. We'll add an audio track in again, just for an example. And this is where you can control basic mixer functions like volume, mute, solo, and so on. Now we're going to look at really basic audio recording using a microphone, an audio interface to get some sound into Cubase. So the first thing that we're going to do is make an audio track. Really important thing here in configuration, you want to make sure that you've selected mono. Microphones record in mono, and if you've got stereo selected, when you record onto that stereo track, stereo track is two tracks. You're only going to record onto one side, which would be the left hand side, and you're only going to hear your voice or whatever you've recorded in your left headphone or your left speaker. It's a really common mistake for beginners to make. So when you record in a microphone, always record in mono and then click add track. Now we set our audio device up earlier and if you figure out that you're not getting audio here, just make sure that you've got the right audio device selected. So I've got the Scarlett 6i6 and I'm using the Scarlett 6i6 and that is what this microphone is plugged into via an XLR cable. I'll link a video up in the description below about basic audio setup with microphones, audio interfaces. So you can have a look through that if you need a bit of clarification on that. But we're gonna dive in and show you how to get it into Cubase at the moment. So I've got this microphone plugged into input one on my Scarlett 6i6 and by default, that's the one that Cubase is gonna pick up as the microphone to listen to. So record enable is selected and that tells Cubase, when I hit this record button, I want you to record audio onto this track. But you'll notice at the moment that I'm talking into this mic and I can't see anything metering here and I can't hear anything coming through Cubase. What I need to do is hit this monitor button just here. And now, straight away, you can see that that's coming through into Cubase. If I talk into that mic a little bit closer, you can see it getting louder. I'm sorry if that clipped. What you need to do now is set your levels to record. So if you're singing, then sing all the way through and just double check that this doesn't hit the top. You want it to get to about three quarters of the volume maximum. And you can get a better view of that in the mixer window just down here. So get your singer to sing all the way through and just make sure that you're not hitting these click marks because if it does, that's bad news. It doesn't sound very good. Then simply hit record just down here and we'll be recording. When I hit record, you're gonna hear the metronome and it's gonna give me a count in of two bars. So I've got two bars to get ready and then the recording's gonna start. And now the recording's going um, and my voice is being recorded through this microphone onto that audio track in Cubase. Now what that metronome does, that clicking, is allows you to keep in time. So if your drummer's playing to that and your singer is singing to that, the whole recording is going to be in time. And that's the idea behind a metronome. If you're doing a voiceover or something like that and you don't need it to be in a certain time, then you can turn the metronome off by clicking just here and it's gone a slightly grayer color. Now we'll do that again. I'll click on this and hit backspace to delete it. And we'll hit go for a record again. Whoops. So because I didn't press the comma to take it back to zero, it started where I left off, which was over here. So press the comma to make sure you're back at zero. This double line is back at zero. And then we'll hit record again. And you'll hear that it only clicked for the count in so that I know when to start talking, uh, but I don't hear that metronome going all the way through the recording. And if I drag this down, you'll see that there is actually audio on this track. It's just a little bit quiet. So you can see that's my voice there. 
I'll hit comma to go back to zero and I'll play this through for you. Now, that's something that beginners come up against in Cubase quite a lot. You couldn't hear my recording playing back. That wasn't a technical glitch. You couldn't hear the recording. What you need to do is turn the monitor off. So the audio track is either gonna be listening to the microphone, what it's hearing in real time, or it listens to what's being recorded. It's what's being recorded. So I've turned the monitor off. Now it's listening to just what's been recorded. So let's put that back to zero by pressing the comma and then hit play. And you'll hear that it only clicked for the count in so that I know when to start talking, uh, but I don't hear that metronome going all the way through the recording. There we go. That was my pre-recorded voice um, being listened to by Cubase. Okay, so let's get rid of this audio track by right clicking on here and doing remove selected tracks and show you how to get going with some MIDI. Now, firstly, I just wanna take a second and explain what a virtual instrument is. That's gonna be really important in understanding what the point of MIDI is. So a virtual instrument, let's break that down. Instrument means that it's an instrument, it's something that's gonna make sound, it's something that you can play to make music. That makes sense? Virtual means that it doesn't exist in real life. It's just inside a computer. It's a piece of software. So if we can't pick it up and play it because it's virtual, but it is an instrument that we have to play somehow, then how do we play it? It's not like a physical drum that we can hit. It's not like a guitar that we can play the strings of. We need to be able to play this somehow, but we can't pick it up physically and do that. The way that we play virtual instruments is using something called MIDI. Now, Let's jump back into Cubase and I'll show you how we can get a virtual instrument in there and start triggering it using MIDI. So we're going to come to this add track section and add an instrument track, not a MIDI track. We're going to add an instrument track. So it then gives us this window and it says no VST instrument is selected. So a VST instrument is a virtual instrument. We're going to go and select Haley and Sonic. Now you won't see everything that I see in here. I've got some other software installed on my computer that's showing up here. You're definitely going to see Haley and Sonic SE though. Haley and Sonic or Haley and Sonic in some variety. So we're going to click on that and do add track. Now, this is a virtual instrument that we can trigger using MIDI. What I'm going to do is select a preset, pre-saved settings, as I mentioned earlier. I'm just going to go for a classic grand piano. Now, if I click on this keyboard down here, you're going to hear what that sounds like. I'm going to turn the gain down if I can find it. There we go. So when we put some MIDI notes in and start triggering it, we're just going to hear that piano sound, which is really cool. It means you don't actually have to have a piano to record, uh, to be able to use piano sounds in your music. And that's one of the big advantages of virtual instruments. So let's close out of this because we've got it set as we want. We've got that piano set. Let's close that down. Um, there's a few different ways that you can get MIDI in to trigger that virtual instrument. And let's have a look at a couple of them. First of all, you can draw MIDI notes in. Secondly, you can play them using either a MIDI keyboard, uh, which just looks like a standard piano, but it only sends MIDI notes. It doesn't actually send audio. I've got a video about that, which I'll link up on the card. Any other MIDI controller, so for example, a launch pad, that sends MIDI notes and that would be received by Cubase and would trigger this virtual instrument. And lastly, we can play virtual instruments just using your standard computer keyboard, which is really handy if you don't have a MIDI keyboard or it's a bit of a hassle to set one up and you just wanna throw something in nice and quickly. That's what I'm gonna be doing in this example. In order to access the computer keyboard using Cubase, you wanna hold Option on a Mac or Alt on a PC and press K for Kilo. Now down here, you see QWERTY. Now, if I press that on my keyboard, you can hear the notes. So we can see that this MIDI track is again record enabled, which tells Cubase, right, when I hit record, I want you to be recording any incoming MIDI signals onto this track. So that's exactly what we're gonna do. I'm gonna press record, then I'm gonna play some jazzy stuff on here, 
and it's going to record using that piano sound. Let's go. As you can tell, I'm a classically trained piano player. So let's have a listen back to that. Press the comma. Ah. When you're in QWERTY mode, when you've pressed Alt K and you're using the QWERTY keyboard to play virtual instruments, the comma does not take you back to zero. You can either press this button just down here to come back to the start, or you can just press Alt K again to come out of that. So let's play that. And when this gets to here, we're going to start hearing that piano stuff that I just recorded. There we go. Now I mentioned earlier that you can also draw in MIDI notes. So what I've just done is opened up the MIDI editor. And all I did to do that was double click on this just here, which is the MIDI that I just recorded, the MIDI clip. So if I want to draw MIDI notes in, um, which is great if you don't actually play something, you can just draw stuff in and that will make the sound. You don't actually have to play it or be in time. Um, if I want to draw stuff in, I'm going to grab the pencil tool and just draw notes in, which is awesome. Now this is obviously going to sound horrendous. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to this tool, highlight them and drag them out to make them nice and long. And then we'll play that. It's, it's going to sound grim, to be perfectly honest, but that's fine. It's just to illustrate the purpose that you can draw these MIDI notes in and then play them. Yeah, that didn't sound good, but it gives you a good idea of the fact that you can just draw these MIDI notes in. You don't have to be able to play something. You don't have to have a MIDI keyboard. You don't have to play in time. MIDI is really, really flexible in that sense. And if you want to learn more about it, as I mentioned, there's a MIDI video on the YouTube card that you can check out anytime. So guys, that's all for this first Cubase tutorial. If you've enjoyed this video, then please do leave a like. It really does mean a lot to me and it lets me know what you're enjoying and what I can improve. Now on my channel, I've made a playlist called Cubase Tutorials and I'm going to be adding to that as time goes on, looking at things like the core pads, the sampler tracks and other elements of Cubase that are going to build on this knowledge. As I mentioned at the start, I've also cherry picked the best bits of resources that you can carry on learning Cubase with. So you can check those out in the description if you want to crack on and dig into Cubase a little bit more. So please do leave any comments of things that you'd like to see explained in Cubase or in any other videos. My name's been John Holt with The Audio Journey, and I really hope to see you guys again soon. Take care.